Hey there internet, today I'm going to be teaching you how to fix the dog ears on the MR2 Spider's convertible top. Bring what those are, well, if you ever gone to lower the top on your car, think you're going to have a great day, the car's going to look nice and sleek, and then you turn around and you see these little guys. These are called ears, or sometimes dog ears I've seen. And these are caused not because there's a flaw on your top, but because either Toyota or the guy you bought your new to you Spider from didn't install what's called the top strap properly. And I'm going to be showing you how to do that. All you'll need is hands and something to prop the top up with. I'm using this piece of PVC, a big textbook like that one will also work. So first things first, I'm going to cut the video and lift the top up to the position it should be in. Okay, so the top is up and where it's supposed to be. You're just going to support it off this back piece here onto the bottom of the two straps that go along the top. We're talking about these two right here. And it's going to take a minute to show you what a wrongly installed so uh, top strap looks like. And this is how mine came and why I was getting the ears, even though my strap was technically installed. So I've already loosened it on the other side. But as you can see here, this is the little strap that the top strap connects to using this little stud. There's the strap itself. The thing is, this little part of it right here is supposed to be going along this bar. See right here? It's supposed to be going around this and then coming back out. Also, if you look here, this little flap here is called the headboard. And the strap does technically go behind this, but there's another thing behind here that it goes into. I'm going to turn the flashlight on so you can see if the flashlight chooses to work. Yeah, there we go. See this little thing right here? The top strap is supposed to go through this. And if it's not going through this, you're not going to get full ear removal. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the light off. And now I'm going to pull the strap away. See how already loosened on the right side. It's also Velcroed. That's handy slash annoying. There we go. The strap, if it's just completely not in your car, is usually included in the factory. That's the thing. And it was Toyota's job to put them on the car at the dealerships, but half the time they didn't even do it. You'll either find this in your little storage areas back here or in the glove box. Just gonna pull this out. Luckily, my still in good condition. Sometimes they're ripped or stretched, in which case you can buy a new one on Key Techniques. It's a great website, especially for the MR2 Spider. I'll link it in the description. I'd also recommend checking out uh, Spider Chat. And now I'll set up the apparatus we're going to use to get the top strap back into this little lax elastic thing back here and all the way to the other side. As you can see, I've taken the broom off a of Swiffer, or any broom handle will work. And I've taped the top of the strap to it so that the rest of the strap runs down the length. Now what we're going to do is we're going to attach the open end to our strap point right here. You can also start from the other side, it does not matter. And we're going to push the strap through that little uh, opening in there using the broom handle in such a way that the strap doesn't twist around while it's going through. That's why using a broom handle helps. You could do it with string, but the string won't help to keep the strap straight. Also, uh, fastening it on one side before you push it through to the other will help you to know which way to keep the broom rotated. So I'm going to set myself up to start doing that and I'll cut to myself pushing it through. So here we go, we're about to start. Like I said, look for this little bar right here. You want the strap to come around that bar. And then we're just gonna fasten it to its point. It's a little button with some Velcro. And the Velcro kind of just kind of helps keep it there. I'll see if we can do this with one hand. There we go. Now remember also not to let this little button get caught between the bar and the weather strip. If that happens, you'll crush the button, you'll have to drill it out and sew in a new one. And if you're like me, you have no idea how to do that. So now we'll just go ahead and start pushing it through. In hindsight, probably should have waited to tape that onto the end of the stick until it was already around this piece. I'll probably do that now. So we are about to begin pushing the top strap through the uh, little elastic pocket underneath the headboard. 
Uh, I've already rotated it around so that when I do push it through, it should come out on the other side untwisted. I'll double check that as I go. So here we go. You can see the tip of the uh, broom is inside the little elastic pocket. It's best to go in, sorry about that, from behind the weather strip bar. Now we're gonna push through to the other side and hope this works. I just wanna go a bit slow. And yep, looks like that bar is, this strap is not gonna twist and we come up to the other side. Hey, it's spoken too soon. Wait, no, it's fine. It just looks like it did. So you can see it's bulged all, bulged all the way over there. I'm gonna go over there now and we'll see if we made it. Let's see. Yeah, I know it's kind of torn. Crap's a bit, top's a bit crap. I meant to say. And let's see if we reach through there. All right, the other end, little elastic piece. Here it is. Yeah. Can't seem to find it. I'll cut till I find it. So it turns out that uh, the button got snagged on the other side. You want to check to make sure that doesn't happen or else it'll decrease the length of the strap significantly. You won't be able to get it out the other side. Anyways, I unsnagged it and now it's right about here. I'm just going to reach underneath. Found it. I'm just going to pull it all the way through. Hmm, tape seems to be stopping me, but there we go. Yeah, loosely taped. You might have seen that I used duct tape. Actually, not all duct tape. It was like used duct tape, and it's kind of crap. So if it's lightly used tape, you can pull it off, and then reach in again, pull the strap through. And flashlight wants to work. Come on. No, I guess not. Anyways, you can see right there, there's the strap coming through. Now I'm going to remove the broom. <laughs> that should give us a little bit more room to pull the strap all the way through around this bar and then reattach it. So here we go. Broom is now released. So I put it right here so that the light sensor adjusts. There's our top strap pulled through the secondary little elastic thing back there behind the headboard. Here's a little strap for uh, it to attach to. We're going to go around that bar. Right there. And try to attach this with one hand. There we go. I'm going to do from the other side. Velcro helps keep it in place. There we go. And it's attached. See it's going back behind there. Also back behind this little elastic guy right here. Looks like that one's about to peel off. That's okay, I'll just glue that later. Like I said, it's a crap top. But it has only one hole in it, which doesn't let water through yet. And it still works. So you know, I'm keeping it till it absolutely dies. Anyways, that's how to install the head strap and get rid of ears. And now we'll test to make sure that actually got rid of ears. Remove your little support, top fall, and hey, what do you know? My top's still pretty stiff, so it's gonna fight back a bit more than yours will. But yeah, as you can see, by putting it through the little elastic top, it's gonna pull this in. And when we put it down, no ears.